Flash is a 2023 superhero film that is the origin of The Flash's um, his first solo live action movie. Also a version of the Flashpoint story that we've seen before in the CW Flash show season three. But this is about Barry Allen. And he is, uh, after the events of Justice League, he's helping out Batman with a thing. And his father has an appeal to um, not to be wrongfully accused of murdering his mother. And we get a little bit of a flashback to see how that happened, the origin of the Flash. But then we discover that Barry can uh, go back in time. So he decides to do that uh, against uh, the wishes of Bruce Wayne and ends up uh, fracturing history when he finds himself back in 2013, interacting with his parents who are happy and free, as well as a younger version of himself. And now he's trying to navigate this new sort of reality where he's stuck in time and trying to figure out if you know, he, can, he has to do certain things. And then of course they get invaded by the Kryptonians. So this movie is a very fun, a bombastic, uh, crowd-pleasing superhero movie. It is a, a multiverse movie, very similar to Spider-Man No Way Home or uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, but this one is a little bit different because it, they're a different tone for starters. But if you like DC characters or you like DC comics, you know, Batman or Flash or or Supergirl, well not Supergirl, she kind of gets shafted in this movie, but if you like superheroes, the DC superheroes, you're probably gonna like this movie. Now the reason why I say a Supergirl gets shafted is because she does. Uh, she doesn't get a lot of screen time, she's introduced way too late in the game, and she doesn't get a lot to do in the movie, neither do the villains. They return uh, the, to the same villains from Man of Steel. 10 years later, they're bringing back Michael Shannon and uh, Andre Trow and it is simply, uh, they don't get to do much. I think Zod only has about three lines of dialogue and she doesn't get to do much either. So and the movie definitely has some favoritism because it uh, focuses a lot on Barry Allen's emotional core. And that's pretty much the thing that elevates this movie and makes it decent is because the relationship between Barry and his mother, that emotional core is strong throughout the film, as well as his interactions with uh, younger Barry. And uh, we also get a lot of focus on uh, Michael Keaton's Batman iteration. He is um, retired and sort of like, you know, just sort of languishing in the, the, the broken manner by himself. Uh, and, uh, you know, call to action, he returns to help them. And uh, it's a really big bombastic finale. Uh, I just felt like the third act was a little bit rushed. They, they, need, they need a couple more scenes with Supergirl and the Kryptonians and maybe a little more cohesion at the end of the movie because they're all just fighting in a desert. But uh, the movie has great pacing, great jokes, humor, a lot of meme potential in there, uh, lots of funny stuff going on. Uh, pacing was really great. It was the fastest two and a half hours for me. A little bit of uh, fan service at the end, which is not too bad. Uh, some people might like it, some people might not, but overall it's a very entertaining superhero movie and uh, just to, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of controversy and stuff going on with uh, Ezra Miller and uh, the sort of, you know, crimes or whatever and allegations that they've been able to beat or whatever. And there's the whole you know, DC shuffle and all this stuff going on. If you just want to watch an entertaining superhero movie, uh, it's pretty good. I enjoyed it a little bit more than Spider-Man No Way Home. And I give uh, The Flash an eight and a half out of 10.